So one of the stories that we had been monitoring and discussing here on the show for a long time was what the hell are the 49ers going to do with Trey Lance if he can't win the starting well, quarterback job? Just that question was answered and definitively. Then, and then what are they going to do if he can't win the number two quarterback job? Well, I guess what that answer is. <laughs> that answer hammer has dropped. Yeah, oh, and uh, and the uh, decision was made. And so uh, while, while we were working and doing uh, shows in Ireland and uh, everybody was trying to figure out how this whole thing was going to play out with Trey Lance, uh, he was Trey to the Dallas Cowboys for a 2024 fourth round pick. Uh, a lot of people may be surprised that they got some value for a guy who's played in five games since 2019, college included. But nonetheless, Trey Lance and the reasoning behind it was uh, he wanted an opportunity to compete for the number two quarterback job. Apparently, he's going to get that opportunity in Dallas. He had it in San Francisco. It did not work out. He lost to Sam Darnold. So now Trey Lance is a member of the Dallas Cowboys little quarterback trade here as we get ready for the season. What's the most surprising part? Is it the fact that they didn't hang on to him in, in any capacity? Is it who actually made the trade for him? I mean, is this like say anything to you guys about maybe where the Cowboys think they are with Dak? I, that's the first thing I I thought about, but I, I, I don't. You got to be careful of our. You start criticizing Dak, you know they're going to come after you. Well, I, I have Who's no problem. They? I have no problem with they Cowboy fans. I, they get pissed uh, at Lavar when he talks about Dak. I'm, I'm, I'm. Well, first of all, we've all. I, I think. Oh, go ahead. No, your trainer with the Giants. His name slipped my mind, but he told me to tell you hello. Oh yeah, he came Ronnie, by. Ronnie he came Barnes. by. Yeah, he came by. Yeah. He's all. He's all Ronnie, tell, Ronnie Barnes. Yeah. Yeah. He had a Super Bowl ring on. Yeah. 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 Well, I mean, if he was, you know, yeah, could have been Byron. But he was he was he happened to be? Uh, um, did he have glasses? I think I so. I think so. A very you, sophisticated it, young man. Uh, no, just he was not younger. He was older. I know, I know he wasn't young. I was just calling him oh. that. But oh, sorry. last name Barnes has his own practice. I think so. I don't know, man. It was everything was kind of blurry for a while there. I mean, is he on my side? No, uh, he's not. no, no. He's on no, the he's, other side. He's, yeah, he's, he's on, on the Ireland. Side. The Ireland. He's on your side. side. He's on our side. Yeah, yeah it wasn't Ronnie then. It wasn't Ronnie. Yeah, it wasn't Ronnie. Yeah, I just looked, Byron. I just looked up Ronnie, and I can confirm yeah, that's not that's him. Not him. Yeah, no, that was not him. Yeah, All right. Sorry, it was a different one. But yeah. anyway, he told us to tell you hello. Sorry, I didn't mean to get off track. No I was like, as soon as you were like thinking about, I was like, all right, Lavar, Giants division rival. Oh, okay, okay. I was like, yeah, his trainer. Yeah. 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 Well, uh, here's what I'll say about the whole. <laughs> I'm, yeah, I'm just going to keep moving. Team. Yeah, is, is he, he wasn't on my, my side. Team, on my yeah, side. On my side. I was just trying to get it out without like being too obvious. <laughs> is like, he is on, he black? Is he on my side? <laughs> is he a brother? <laughs> is he uh, black, Johnson? <laughs> no. <laughs> which pia- which piano key is he? Ah, uh, <laughs> well, the one that has more. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh. You're so late. Whatever. <laughs> it was a little you didn't had a whole conversation. He just, he just now chiming <laughs> that, in. That was the one, Mark. That was the one Mark was waiting for to pull the trigger. <laughs> There's my opening. <laughs> Way to go, Mark. Um, <laughs> I, th- I think this is – I think it's clear that we – We will learn what Dak Prescott is to the Dallas Cowboys this season and and what that means moving into the future. I don't know that them getting Trey Lance means that this is the end for Dak Prescott. I, 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 I I definitely don't think that that's what it is. But I do think that it is a definitive decision that says that if Dak Prescott doesn't have the type of year that is acceptable to probably Jerry Jones, um, that this is the beginning of the end. I do believe that. And and whether they had brought Trey Lance in or not, I, I think that that's still the conclusion that you probably have to come to um, in looking at what's going on with a closing window of opportunity with the, the current roster that they have in Dallas. It was interesting, too, only because then, like, when you see, oh, you know, Dallas makes this trade for Trey Lance. And and I understand that every owner, every front office member can say, look, you're always looking at bolstering up 
you know, your roster any way you can, and especially behind the quarterback spot, as we've even seen reports about, like, Wentz and, and the Chiefs maybe looking at bringing him in because, God forbid, something happens to your starter. You don't want your entire season to be derailed if you feel like you have a really good team. And the Cowboys do have a good team. So there could be some justification there for saying, hey, we want to have some depth. We want to have some guy, a guy that we feel really good about, um, you know, as he sits and watches Dak and learning from, and he has a similar skill set. Like, the comp, when I was watching Trey Lance, when he was coming out from North Coast State, I was like, reminds me a lot of Dak Prescott. <laughs> like, the way he ran the football and the way he, you know, kind of threw the football around. But then, then, then you hear, like, and Jerry starts saying, oh, yeah, we were kind of trying to get on a Jalen Hurts there, too. And it's, you're like, wait, wait a second. Did you have Dak then? Like, hold on, hold on now. Like, how committed really are you? I mean, right now he's, he's under contract, obviously, for the next couple of seasons. And it's a monumental dead cap hit if they were to just straight out, outright cut him and move on. Uh, next year, it's like, like $62 million. So, like, he's under contract. He's got a couple of voidable years at the end where the team has control. So he's really not an unrestricted free agent until 2025. But it's really structured where the Cowboys cannot move on. It's really hard to trade him because his cap hit is so big. His cap hit in 2024 is $59 million. So, really, the way his deal is structured at this point, after this year, depending on how it goes, it's going to be restructured. It has to be. Like, they don't want to have to absorb almost $60 million against the cap in 2024. So if he does well, he'll get extended, they'll restructure, and, and you'll see additional years and, and, you know, what those monies will be tagged onto it, and that cap hit will be reduced. If he doesn't, I'll be curious to see what happens, you know, moving forward. Cooper Rush played pretty well last year. It's kind of interesting that uh, yeah, they would need – okay. well, okay, I mean, they, they, just, come on. they were winning games with Cooper Rush at least. They did win games with him. As a, as a backup one, quarterback. Two? two? Yeah. So two, one. He's, he was 4-1 and one as a starter last year, Cooper Rush. Yeah, yeah. You know? Rush, Rush, mm-hmm. ooh, what you do to me. <laughs> he was winning. Do you feel the rush? Uh, is that Paul Thanks. Abdul? Yeah, that was Paul Abdul. Good song. Yeah. Um, Underrated. So That's the, the first J-Lo, right? The fact, that, the fact that they brought in Trey Lance to compete for the backup quarterback job when he had a backup quarterback who was serviceable last year, it's just yeah, kind of kind of leads to maybe this wasn't about just yeah, competing. You're, you're trying to like hype it up job. like he was carrying them. I don't just, know that that was the case. I, like, there was like a lot of people that had Cooper Rush in their MVP conversations some people even had done. conversations of why bring back the 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 other guy i agree you, you realize they held their opponents over those four wins to 17 points or less yeah because yeah. his last name is rush and, and he, you he rushed the quarterback rush. that's yeah. true and he kept that's true. you know he kept the offense off the field you know yeah because he was doing so well as, as a quarterback yeah so he, he did so. fine i'm not i'm not trying to like hate him. i'm just saying like let's Let's calm down here. I'm, I'm just, just saying he's number two on the depth chart, even with this blockbuster trade. Uh, MVP, MVP uh, considerations from some people. I mean, all to. it takes is for Dak to go down, and then the MVP wor- race is it's it's back on. And Dak, or, Dak and has could had, possibly go down. Has had some injury issues. All, can, all you know, it's you know what this does say though that the number two competition between Sam Darnold. And Trey Lance must have been such really a wipeout yeah. Yeah. that they didn't even – it wasn't even – unless Trey Lance made it to the point to where he it would be awkward if he was a backup quarterback to Brock Purdy. But this, this feels like he got dominated in that backup don't, job. Don't let Sam Darnold get an opportunity in that offense. I'm just telling you. He'll, he's going to ball out if he plays in Shanahan's system. Now, you've seen it a little bit in preseason – I'm just telling you, I think he's his skill set and the style of offense and and how Kyle can work around all that. I'm telling you, man, he he'll be really good in that system if something happens to Purdy or if he starts to kind of cool off. Can you guys think of a comp where a team gave up the amount that they gave up to move up to draft a guy? And this is what the end result was a couple of years later. Can you think of this ever happening in the NFL before? Because I can't. Think of all the draft capital they gave up. No. 
And then to get basically bailed out by the last pick of the draft. It was awkward, too, listening to John Lynch speak about Trey Lance. Like, oh, he just spoke so highly of him. And he's just such a great guy. And, and you know, it's, it's just unfortunate that we had to, you know, go this direction with it. And he talked about how aggressive and how much Dallas wanted him and yeah. giving up that tremendously large fourth round draft pick to bring him in and just everything that played a part in and him ending up in Dallas like it was an opportunity that they just couldn't pass up with you know with Trey Lance it just it just made you just start to wonder like honestly it you know some people could see it as bad for football I actually see it as good I, I thought it was a, it was an interesting move. It was an aggressive move, and it almost seems as though they may have cut him at the end of 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 this this off season, like or at the end of this preseason, that they would have let him go. I mean, it, it just seemed like they weren't even going to hold on to him, and and I think that that's kind of it sets a different time. I mean, you you tell me, Q, but I almost feel like when a quarterback of 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 that high of a draft stock ends up with this type of of fate in their 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 original their original landing place where they got drafted it just says to me that the NFL is taking on a more less loyal more aggressive approach to what it is that they would like to achieve 100% right uh, 100% I, I think it's it's never become harder for young quarterbacks to try to go in and, and succeed, at, at least in the aspect of the expectations are through the roof immediately. I mean, we talked about C.J. Stroud earlier being named a starter. If, if he doesn't look to be the part, there, were, there are going to be people who write him off, which is incredibly unfair to him or Bryce Young or Anthony Richardson, any other rookie quarterback that's going to start out the gate, right? I mean, I, I don't care like who you are. It, it takes time. Everyone's got a different learning curve. Everyone's in a different situation and circumstance. And unfortunately, we see just so many people now have the expectation that like they're going to come in from day one and be able to make their team a Super Bowl contender. And there's just so much that goes into it. So it's, it's unfortunate for Trey Lance. And, and Jonas did a really good job of painting the picture of, you know, how he performed in the limited action that he saw. I mean, the, the reality is he, he had two starts back in 2021. Wasn't too bad. Um, he got, what, two starts in, in 2022 last yeah. year and, and didn't look as good, right? One of those was in a monsoon in Chicago, which if you're going to hold Trey Lance to that standard, you should probably hold Justin Fields to that standard. Like a, leg- a legitimate monsoon. Legitimately. Yeah. Like <laughs> at, neither, threw, neither threw well on that. At Soldier Field, which is but, what? But, the but that's turf. the problem is you have so many nerds who are like box score readers. Like, well, look at his stats. Like, all right, nerd. Go back to mom <laughs> and dad's basement. Nerd. <laughs> Go watch the tape and tell me that you were expecting your quarterback to have a perfect QB rating <laughs> after those conditions, nerd. By the, by the way, monsoon on the worst. Worst field conditions in the yeah. NFL, like a at slip Soldier and slide field. on Soldier Field. <laughs> so, but my point is this: is like nerd between him getting injured, and then I guess in the second year, not seeing the, the progression you'd hope for, which really only came down to like one start of the two he had. You kind of look at it and go, "All right, we've got this other guy who's a lot cheaper, and we've got Nick Bosa." We've got a number of the really good players we'd like to build around, and if we can go ahead and utilize Brock Purdy on his rookie deal, that's a lot cheaper while we build these other contracts. And if we can find a backup for relatively cheap, which they did in Sam Darnold, we're kind of good at moving on. Let's just cut our losses and move on. We, we can't change the decision that we made. And again, I, and I, I don't know, I've said this, and I'll continue to say it. I still think their trade up to number three was with an entirely different intent and that's why probably internally there's not as much pressure or heat on the decision to, to, to trade away those draft picks to go to that spot. Because, I, again, I think it was in an attempt to lure 
the Packers and, and the trade of Aaron Rodgers and going, going up there. And, and once the Green Bay deal fell through, they were stuck in that spot of, of taking Trey Lance like they did. So, look, hindsight's what, you know, it is what it is. But as far as what they, what they gave up to go get him, I mean, they, they just felt like they're in a different situation now to go win a Super Bowl, and they've got a guy in Brock Purdy they believe in. So why not allow Trey Lance an opportunity to go somewhere else where he can continue his career? I, I think that, look, John Lynch is a genuine guy. I think there's a lot of genuine um, comments he made about Trey Lance and, and how he feels towards him. So, I, I, look, I'm glad Trey Lance got a landing spot in Dallas. I, I do think that's a good situation for him. He could have been dealt to other places, and this is a, this is a legit one.